Mood boards have been a fundamental part of my creative process since I was a design student all the way to now as a creative director. There are three reasons why I think they're so important. Number one is they help to solidify your creative concept or your design style so that as you move through the project, you've always got a reference point to come back to. Number two, they inspire. So particularly with, when you're working with a creative team, it's important that everyone's kind of on the same page, everyone's feeling really sort of enthusiastic about the project and having a really strong mood board helps a lot in sort of briefing the project into the team and making sure they're all going in the right direction. And the last reason why I think mood boards are so important, they help to bring the client along for the journey. So if you get them involved in the project from the very beginning, it's gonna make the project go much smoother. So before we get to the mood board itself, we're gonna take a look at the brief. So the brand is Roadies. Now Roadies is a coffee brand targeted towards cyclists who are passionate about both their sport and their coffee. The brand should embody the spirit and adventure and community that comes with road cycling, whilst also providing a delicious and high quality coffee experience. And what I normally start with is just going through and highlighting some key words in the brief. So you've got things like adventurous, exploration, uh, effortless chic, community, inclusivity, and what this is gonna do is just give us some sort of starting points for our board so we can clearly show the personality of the brand. So we're not focused too objectively on cycling or coffee because that's not gonna be unique to the brand personality. We're focusing more on values and personality traits. And what this also does is starts to bring the client along for the journey. So if you're using words that they've put in the brief, it shows that you're considering what they really want. And it's important that you keep referring back to this throughout the creative process. So let's get to finding some inspiration. So we're going to start with finding reference imagery. And the best website to do this is Pinterest. Now, there are a bunch of other inspiration websites out there, but I just think the tools that Pinterest give you are really helpful. And there's such a huge library of stuff on there. I just don't think you can go wrong. So what I'm really looking for is to fill a few sort of categories of design for my mood board. So I'm going to be looking at typography, design style, maybe illustration style, uh, definitely lifestyle photography and color palette to provide a really strong sort of overall look and feel for the brand going forwards. So since this brand is so strongly linked to cycling, I'm going to start looking at some language in the world of cycling. So I'll start looking at the sort of cycling badges that you get on the front of bikes. I, th I think they always look pretty cool. So, I mean, stuff like this. I really like the sort of typography you get on these old sort of vintage badges. So I'm just going to keep saving a few of those. Um, this one good thing I like about Pinterest is that when you click on one image, it will just bring up a bunch of related imagery for you to explore. I quite like this typography here. I'm going to show you a trick. If you click the magnifying glass and then sort of, let's see if this works, make it the size of the bit you want to capture. It will then bring up more imagery and styles that are similar to that. So it's not really done exactly what I wanted in getting the typography, but it has brought up some more quite nice badges. So I'll save a few of those. So another thing I really want to capture is the kind of lifestyle around road cycling. Uh, it's quite sort of chic, quite stylish. And from memory, there's some quite interesting sort of colors and designs involved. So let's go road cycling. This is quite a cool image. It's got a little bit of attitude to it. It feels very stylish. Uh, and I like the sort of bold contrasting colors we've got coming through. Uh, so I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna use that as a starting point to find some others. So, And I'm not being too precious about what I save at this point in time. I'm just kind of saving stuff that sort of feels right to me. And if I see an image I really like, I'll click through to that and then kind of explore what else that brings up. I'm quite liking this sort of European feel Ah, now this is kind of what I'm after. It's got a really nice sort of attitude to it. It's clearly about sort of cycling. You can see various elements like the gloves, the bike, the sort of helmet strap and the vest. But it's very stylish. And sometimes what I'm looking out for is does this image fit on the sort of vision board of someone who wants to be within this sort of lifestyle? Because they're the sort of things when you're building a brand that people are really going to pick up on and resonate with. Yeah, this is coming up with a bunch of really nice imagery. It's really getting that kind of lifestyle angle that I want, which I think is something you always want to do. A lot of the time, if there's a brand that's sort of based around an activity, people are less interested in the activity, more around the lifestyle and the attitude around it. Now I'm going to keep referring back to our brief and the words that we pulled out earlier. So I think we've got some quite nice stuff for effortless chic. 
uh, adventurism, explorerism kind of thing. Um, I think we should really look at some kind of design styles and colours and figure out how we can get a sense of community, uh, inclusivity and high quality coming through. So as I was saying earlier, I really like that sort of European typography style. So I'm going to look at some Italian uh, vintage typography. And already I think this is really, really cool. Um, so I will say that. Uh, this is really nice as well. I'm just going to scroll through again, just save everything that I like without being too precious. There's some beautiful stuff coming through here. Campari is a great brand to look at. And talking about other brands, it's sometimes great to sort of imagine the other brands that fit with your brand and kind of look at how they present themselves, look at their logo style, their colors, their photography style. And so I might look at Rafa for this because it's a very stylish cycling brand. I've got an idea of how, how we can bring through this idea of inclusivity and community. Um, it's all about sort of lots of different kind of misfits coming together. So I think a collage style could be quite nice. Um, so I'm going to just start looking at some collage. Uh, look at some modern collage. It took a little bit longer to find what was after that time, but I really like this sort of style. It's quite bright and sort of contemporary looking. Uh, a lot of these collages go a bit too vintage for what I'm after. I love the different textures that comes through it. It feels very adventurous. So I'm going to look for a few more images around that style. So I'm not looking for things directly around cycling. It's more about the principles and values of the brand or coffee for that matter. Because if I made it too much about cycling or coffee, it was just going to end up with a very sort of generic brand identity that is not ownable because any other brand that is around cycling or coffee could use the same style. So it's much more about conveying the brand's personality. So I think I've got enough reference now. As you can see, I've got lots, like way more than I actually need for a board, but that's just how I like to do it. I sort of filter it out afterwards and pick the best bits. So let's get to the board. So I always design my mood boards in Photoshop. This is just so I can get a lot of layering and depth that is just more difficult to do in other programs like Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to start with a 1920 by 1080 p canvas, uh, 300 dpi. And then the first image I'm going to bring in is something big. So I really like this image, just the sort of cyclist sitting in a kind of, looks like an Italian town square holding a coffee. I just think it really gives off the right vibe for the sort of brand identity that I want to create. Um, I also bring in sort of graphics, so like this uh, stripe here, which kind of make, reminds me of the different cycling kits and the way the bikes themselves are painted. And you'll see as we go through, it's this kind of mix of graphic, photography and design style that makes for a really sort of interesting board. Um, the colour palette I'm going for is sort of based off that sort of chic cycling style. I really like that kind of pastel pink and the sort of really rich navy blue or black. And the next main image I want to be focusing on is this Italian whiskey I found. It just really embodies craftsmanship, but it does it in a really cool sort of stylish way with these sort of bold vertical stripes going across the bottle. So I'm going to put that sort of centre stage and add a bit of shadow to it again just to get a bit of depth and then I'm just going to brush down the side of it. Now I know that this may not be strictly necessary to convey a design style but as I say I like to make mood boards very sort of inspiring and for the board design itself to reflect the brand identity that I want to create rather than just having lots of different sort of design elements on a, on a page. So I like to create a lot of pace, uh, which means basically having some really big images and then lots of little small images. So with the cycling badges, um, I'm going to use them as more sort of supporting assets. So they're going to go a lot smaller. And then just to remind myself what I'm supposed to be encapsulating on the board, I'm going to copy in some of the words from the brief to kind of stick to. This is going to help when presenting the board as well to the client because it gives me a sort of mini script to read off of. So it's important to just always refer back to the brief when you're creating anything. 
Now, as I go through, I'm just sort of dropping things roughly in place of where I want them to be, and I can sort of tweak it afterwards if I want to. So again, as you're designing, don't be too precious about it. Just get things roughly the size and position you want them to be, so they're all kind of working together. As you can see, I really like to sort of cut some elements out, like the Brooklyn hat, to help sort of get points of focus and layering. And you can start to see I'm kind of grouping it as well. So on the left, you've got more typography and logos. Then in the middle, it's a bit more lifestyle and general design style. And then on the right, it's a little bit more sort of design detailing, which just makes it a bit clearer to talk through and a bit clearer to understand. Now I'm just going to go through and sort of tweak elements, change the size and position of elements slightly. Uh, I think it's looking a little bit too kind of messy at the moment. Um, and that's down to having too many colours on there, I think, and the positioning of elements being a bit too sort of all over the place. So what I'm going to do is create a little bit more alignment, and I'm going to come in and change some of the colours. So bringing in some more sort of hints of pinks and blues throughout, so that they kind of match the key colours of that main image in the centre. A quick tip for you, if you saturation, you can quite easily change one colour in an image, so this sort of uh, white frame image in the top right. If you put an adjustment layer over the top, hold Option and click the line between the adjustment layer and layer you want to affect. Then in Hue Saturation, I'm going to click the drop down list and come down to yellow, because that's the color I want to change. And then I can just change the hue and saturation of just that color. So now I've got the colorways looking a bit more cohesive. I think the mood board overall is looking a lot stronger and it's given a much more direct vision of what the brand could look like. Now, as you can see, there's still a bit of room for sort of creative exploration here. There's a few different type styles, some different photography styles, and some different graphic styles as well. So whilst the board looks cohesive, it's not too rigid. We don't want to completely restrain the creative process as we go into the design phase of the project. Now the final part of the mood board process is presenting to your client or your team. Now I find it really helpful to keep it a little bit sort of work in progress, quite open. Again, to make sure everyone feels like they're being brought along for the journey and everyone's part of the creative process. And when you're presenting, it's important to be super clear on the reasoning for everything. So there's nothing in your mood board that you don't know why exactly it's there. And this is going to give you a sense of authority over the brand. You know what the creative direction is and why you've made certain decisions. And another reason why I think it's always great to actually present your mood boards is that you get people's true initial reactions. So some people will give you a great poker face and it's really hard to sort of read what they're really thinking, but other times it's really valuable and for better or for worse, you know, sometimes if they really don't like it, it's good to know there and then so you can sort of discuss why and how to move forward. But if they love it, then they just feel really on board and part of the process and really enthusiastic about the project going forward, which is also extremely valuable. So that is my full creative process when it comes to the mood boards. I'm going to do more videos on the future on the sort of design concept stage and design development stage. So over time, I'm going to give you a full sort of breakdown of my creative process on a branding project like this. And if you've got any questions along the way, just leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. And don't forget to like and subscribe.